Hi friends. Um, I am going to have us just read one chapter again because I've been getting um, much higher quality jots from you from chapter seven. So thank you for those. Continue to um, push yourself to make those high quality jots. I've seen a lot of people getting creative um, with making T-charts or graphic organizers with four different sections um, and some other really neat ways to um, organize and push yourself to think deeper um, about the chapters. So I'm gonna have us go ahead and just do one chapter at a time again so that you can spend more time um, trying to push yourself to make your jots of higher quality. So we're gonna read chapter eight. Um, Bones here. Luca, do you want to come read? Luki? Yeah, she's being very independent right now and in the mood for read aloud. Um, but we'll get started without her. Uh oh. Um, all right, so at the end of chapter seven, Eben, who we learned, the gap-toothed boy's name is Eben, was trying to get um, Curzon to join the army, to be a soldier. And so far, Curzon is saying no. Chapter eight, Wednesday, October 8th, 1777. This is a quote, general orders of George Washington. As the general is informed that numbers of free Negroes and desirous of enlisting are desirous of enlisting, he gives leave to the recruiting officers to entertain them and promises to lay the matter before the Congress who he doubts not will approve of it. The 16th Massachusetts Regiment was camping on ground that sloped toward the Hudson. I resolved to keep a keen lookout for Trumbull and flee as soon as my belly was full. Eben jabbered a flood of stories about his uncle and his uncle's wife and all manner of cousins on both sides of his family. And thinking about cousins made him tell a story about his favorite plow horse. The boy could talk the bark off of a tree. He didn't even pause to draw breath. Just as I began to wonder if his wits had been rattled in the battle, he stopped in front of a dirty tent that sagged with damp. Best to store your kitten here, he said. We've had some pilfering by the cook fires. Can't trust no one, it seems. I hesitated. If I did cross paths with Trumbull, it would be safer to have my stolen treasure here and not on my person. But if I had to flee, how would I get back here to claim what was mine? The cook made biscuits for the chicken stew, Evan said. Are you fond of biscuits? My belly voted louder than my wits. I dropped my haversack and followed him. Ebenezer Woodruff was an honest rebel. The biscuits were sand dry, but they were entirely free of worms and dirt. The chicken stew tasted strongly of fish. I ate two bowls and begged for a third. When the cook saw how hungry I was, he rummaged in his trunk and drew out a salty hunk of cheese that he cut in two pieces. Then he refilled our cups with cider. Does your cook always feed you so much? I asked as he walked away. I get extra on account of he lost a game of cards to my uncle last week. I must ask your uncle to teach me how to play. He won't, says card playing is a sin. But he plays? Uncle is allowed to be a sinner. A sinner. I'm not. Look. He grabbed my arm and pointed somewhere at the crowd of folk who swarmed around us. There he is. Uncle, he shouted. Shh, I warned. He ignored me. Uncle Caleb, he hollered, waving his hat in the air. I found him, sir. His name is Curzon. Don't shout. I felt like every man in the army was staring at us. He didn't hear me. Evan replaced his hat on his head. We'll chase him down. From within the crowd came a familiar roar of rage. My bowels twisted. Let me go back. From within the crowd came a familiar roar of rage, my bowels twisted. Come on, Eben urged me. I need a privy, I lied, looking for the source of the trumble-like noise. I'll meet you at your tent, Eben grinned. Don't get lost. I turned to run in the opposite direction just as Trumbull spotted me. Found you, you thieving rogue, he bellowed. 
I leapt over a cook fire, stumbled on a rock, fell to the ground, and scuttled on all fours like a crab past a collection of soldiers cleaning their muskets. Get him, yelled Trumbull. Stop that boy. A few fellows gave me chase and caught me easily. Trumbull approached, snorting and steaming. He drew so close that I could smell his rotting teeth. Where are they, he demanded. Where are what, sir? I asked, trying to appear innocent. You know what I'm after, Trumbull growled. I don't know what you're talking about, sir, I said. He smacked the side of my head with his fist. My bloody swoons, whelp. My bloody spoons, whelp. The blow staggered me and a few fellows cheered. Trumbull drew back his fist again and I raised my arms to protect myself. Sir, the sergeant, someone warned. All the soldiers fell silent and stood ramrod straight as the tall man strode toward us with Evan close on his heels. They had the same large ears, high brows, and long freckled noses. Eben had not mentioned his uncle was a steel-eyed sergeant. The man glared at me, and I stood straighter, too. What cause have you to beat this boy? The sergeant asked my former boss. He stole from me, Trumbull said. Four shoe buckles and a handful of spoons. Tis no concern of the army. Is, is this true? The sergeant asked. No, sir, I said. Absolutely not. He can't breathe without lying. Trumbull grabbed my arm tight. I'll take care of the matter. We'll not bother you any longer. He's a soldier, Evan blurted. You can't take him. You're a soldier, the sergeant asked me. He wants to enlist, sir, Evan said quickly. I told you what he did yesterday. He's exactly the kind of fellow we need. In fact, him and me were just on our way to your tent to sign the enlistment papers. We were. The sergeant looked me over. Where's your kit, your gun? I know where it is, Evan said. Bring it to my tent, his uncle answered. You too, he pointed at Trumbull and me. Come this way. The sergeant's tent stood with the other officers in a grove of birch trees with golden leaves. Before I could figure a plan of escape, Eben arrived, grinning like a lack brain and carrying my haversack and musket. He hailed his uncle, who was setting a piece of paper, a quill, and a bottle of ink on an upturned log. This is his, Eben handed the musket to his uncle and set my sack on the ground. The sergeant examined the flintlock. You took this from the red coat who shot at Ebenezer? He asked me. Yes, sir, I answered. He could have stolen it from one of our boys, Trumbull said. The sergeant leaned the musket against the log and picked up the haversack. And this is yours too? That broken compass was not a good omen, I decided. It was a curse. I believe so, sir. Many haversacks look alike. He untied the knotted rope and spilled the contents of the sack onto the ground. Shirt, stockings, blankets, musket tools, knife. He listed setting each item apart from the others. Drinking cup, tinderbox. He shook out the sack to prove it was empty. I see no spoons, Mr. Trumbull. Nor did I. Not only were the spoons and buckles missing, but so was the compass and Isabel's little bag of seeds. I'd been robbed. Trumbull frowned. He must have sold them yesterday. Search his person and you'll find the money. He was occupied yesterday, said the sergeant, fighting the British. Another lie, said Trumbull. This boy saved my nephew, sir, the sergeant said sharp, sharply. Trumbull spat in the dirt. Don't believe it. Hand upon the Bible, I swear, Evan said. I'd be dead if it weren't for him. We are beholden to you for that, the sergeant said as he bowed to me. He bowed at the waist to me. Gentlemen bowed out of courtesy, out of respect. I'd seen thousands upon thousands of bows while serving Judge Bellingham and later his son. They bowed when greeting each other. Upon taking their leave, they bowed to ladies and to their elders. They did not bow to slaves or thieves or ditch scoundrels. But Sergeant Woodruff bowed to me and I was all of those things. I returned his bow slight, slowly and more deeply to show I understood the honor he paid me. Sir, I claim possession of that weapon, Braid Trumbull, to pay for what the whelp stole from me. The sergeant leveled his gaze at Trumbull. A soldier needs that musket more than you. Will not enlist, Trumbull said. It's a ruse. Care to rager on that? The sergeant uncorked his ink pot and dipped his quill. What's your name, lad? I had the unpleasant sensation that I was about to jump from a fry pan into the fire. And... With that, we will stop for today. Make sure you are doing your high quality jots. Um, 
going back, rereading the text super closely and analytically with a writerly wide awakeness um, and get creative with the way that you're organizing your jots. And I look forward to seeing chapter eight jots for our book club tomorrow. Thanks for listening.